Hello and welcome everyone. I would uh, want to start the session now. I hope everything looks good. And today we are going to talk about everything that is there for um, the industry that is related to aviation, all your careers, what is there in cabin crew, what uh, are the job prospects of an air hostess and whatnot. So let's get started. My name is Jasmine Kaur. I'm an independent uh, training consultant and a freelance corporate trainer. And I will be talking to you about uh, career prospects in cabin crew industry, specifically air hostess, which is a very, very promising career, I must say. So uh, what is um, a hair hostess? What does uh, this job profile suggest? And what are uh, the other very, very common questions that people have related to this career is something that we are going to discuss today. Um, beginning with this work is to study on a personal attributes required by a cabin crew to carry out their roles and responsibility. Now, this will give you an idea about the qualities of a cabin crew, what an airline is looking for in a cabin crew role, what is uh, an air hostess and an air hostess uh, usually do, and whose work is uh, entirely to assure safety and comfort of the passenger because it's again a service industry. So air hostess can be employed in a national, international, commercial, or maybe corporate aircrafts. So this is uh, something uh, that we must uh, you know, keep in mind. Moving forward, uh, let's discuss some of the very, very important roles that are there for a cabin crew. Well, uh, there are basically three different roles. One is safety, which is very important. Second is first aid, and third is service. As we all know that aviation is a service industry and therefore um, all the airlines, whether they are international or in, uh, national, they ensure that their passengers have a very, very comfortable flight. So therefore they ensure they, the training and everything that they design is within the prospect of the job role. Now let's uh, discuss some of these roles in details. One is safety, which I told you is the foremost priority. Now, air safety is a term encompassing the theory, investigation, categorizing flight failures, and how to prevent these through regulation and education and training. Now, it can be applied in the context campaigns that informs the public as to the safety during the air travel is basically what the picture is depicting right now. This is, uh, as I said, primary job of a cabin crew. Now, the pre-flight safety demonstrate, also known as in-flight safety demonstration, they tell you the safety instructions that they are in. They ask you to pull out the catalog, they ask you to read it, maybe when they are describing it, the person is reading it from the behind and there is someone who is actually telling you what to do and what not to do in a, a state of emergency, of course. Second very important role here is if by chance there is any, any kind of medical emergency, first aid is something that plays a very, very important role. So we have to keep in mind that the first aid is also something that they are taught on. So the second job role, as I said, is first aid and the aircraft first aid kit is engineered to help operator deal in medical emergencies that commonly occur in the aviation environment. Now, supplies are separated into uh, special coded airways, maybe bandaging and assessing the medical pouches. Uh, each easy movable pouch has a clear plastic window, quick identification during the emergency situation. So this comes very handy when there is by chance any medical emergency during the flight. Third, as I said, was the service um, role that they have. Now, servicing their passengers and ensuring their comfort level is, again, a very important role that a cabin crew has to play. So they assist passengers in the events in emergency, directing passengers to evacuate a plan, plane, uh, and also following an emergency landing, maybe just in case. Also, they ensure when they walk down the aisle, they ask you what you want to have. They uh, usually have to verify that passengers have complied the federal regulation prior to takeoffs and landings. They verify the first aid kits, 
other emergency equipment, including the fire extinguisher, are in order. So all of these roles come under the servicing. Well, a service in the, uh, because these are associated with a service industry, they make sure that all their passengers, all their customers have a very comfortable flight so that they keep on recurring, uh, they keep on flying with them on a frequent basis. So that is, uh, that is uh, you know, uh, an, um, that is a role that they take very seriously and they train at their cabin crew in a way all all the training um, these uh, coaching um, people that they want them to have the in-field experience so that is something quite relevant here well moving forward uh, let's discuss some of the key qualities that an airline considers. So all the airlines consider uh, these three elements that while they select a cabin crew. One is eligibility, second is suitability, and third is special requirements. When it comes to eligibility, the candidate has to meet a required educational qualification. The candidate has to know swimming, has to be fit, also must have a passport. So these are some of the very, very basic uh, eligibility rules that all the airlines have in common. Uh, suitability is something that they will look forward for. One, um, suitability, why suitability is because uh, they want their uh, cabin crew people to be very welcoming. They want them to service with a smile on their face. They want their customers to feel welcomed and at home whenever they are flying with them. So they look forward for maturity. They look forward for friendliness, even sincerity. They have to have good communication skills also. They must be um, you know, a team player. They must not stand out uh, maybe as an orator or a you know anarchist but a team player who takes forward everybody with them and another thing that they look forward is for knowledge now knowledge is something that you can inculcate and this is where training industry steps in which is uh, in the aviation so also um uh, something that is very very required in this area is patience because you are required to serve a lot of people you're required to um, adhere to their expectations so therefore you have to have a certain level of patience and self-confidence also so this is why uh, they usually have an interview before they select a candidate in this interview uh, they usually look forward for all these skills that are just mentioned Moving forward, we have a lot of job roles in cabin crew. It's not just saturated to air hostess or maybe air hosts, um, stewards, stewardess. I mean, there are a lot of options to explore. Let's look uh, one by one. One is air steward, which is the job that involves ensuring the safety of the passengers through flight guiding um, passengers about the emergency. Then we have cabin crew. Now they are required to oversee everything related to the passengers once they are boarded on flight after the takeoff. Also, uh, airline steward, uh, the, uh, also the job of airline steward involves that they ensure the safety of the passengers and uh, the comfort also. Another uh, category that we have here is senior flight attendant. Now they demonstrate the safety, emergency equipment in the flight, ensure safety of the passengers and everything. The other category that we have is of ground staff. Now, what does the ground staff do? Ground staff are insured for multiple responsibilities. Now, they check in with passengers, they uh, guide them to the flight, provide passengers information about the flight. They also provide them assistance and, you know, maybe answering all their queries, making them comfortable that, okay, now this is the flight, you are most welcome here. So this is something that they, um, you, uh, this is uh, the area, this is the kind of job that is also there in the industry. Another category that we have is of a trainer or a recruiter. Now they're responsible for coordinating and providing training to the air hostess and the cabin crew regarding on-flight duties, security systems and emergency procedures. All the roles that we just mentioned were the three roles. The first was safety, second was first aid, and the third was service. So all these three roles are taught by these trainers. Next is your crew scheduler. Now they are charged um, a job, a plan, or they prepare and manage the schedule of the crew and the pilot. Then we have crew manager. Now he is responsible for the welfare of all the crew members on an airline. So these are all the kind of job prospects that we have in aviation. 
moving forward, let's discuss some of the employability um, opportunities. What are the employment opportunities for air hostess uh, primarily? Huh? Unlike earlier times, employment opportunities of air hostess are not just limited to commercial airlines. There are various job opportunities. There are commercial airlines, there are corporate airlines, air hostess training institutes who train or who hire trainers. Also, there are chartered airlines, military airlines, personality development institutes, airports, and top recruiting companies. So you have a lot of opportunities here. It's, it's like an ocean of opportunities in aviation. Well, uh, moving forward, uh, these are some of the very, very renowned airlines that we have today um, with us. It starts from um, with Tara, Air Asia, Go Air, TrueJet, Qatar Airlines, Saudi Airlines, and then we have Emirates, which is uh, an international player in the market. Then we have Air China, Singapore Airlines, again, a very renowned one. So these are some of uh, the top recruiters and the top airlines that we have there. Now, um, let's discuss something else now. Now, this is something uh, you most, uh, most of you must be looking forward for. The, uh, this slide tells you about all the top institutes that there are for air hostess training. It, stand, it is, um, you know, of course, the first one is Franklin, uh, Franklin Institute of Air Hostess Training, and then comes your Bombay Flying Club College, then is your Universal Aviation Academy, th that is based in Chennai. Then we have mm -hmm. Jet Airways Training Academy, and then we have Indigo Training Center also. So it um, goes on to Air Hostess Academy in Bangalore, Air Hostess Academy in Delhi, Indira Gandhi Institute, and much more. So we have a number of institutes, but these are some of the very top ones. Remuneration, again, uh, is another perk that we have here. Now, uh, there are a lot of perks, of course, uh, we will also discuss them later, but they are also, we have to keep in mind here that payment is usually, in every industry, payment is according to the kind of experience that you have. Same goes for uh, the aviation industry. Now, you are paid according to your experience, but the enhanced salary, even for a newcomer, is pretty handsome. So, a reputed international airline pay an average of 1.5 lakhs, and a senior air hostess can even get, uh, get up to and above 3 lakh rupees, which is uh, a pretty good amount. As I said, we will be discussing pros and cons. So here are some of the pros of uh, being an air hostess. Now, one is that you get, get to see a um, new world. You get to see all the new places. You get to travel. You have many jobs in the world to offer you an opportunity to travel around the world. So there are not much jobs, but when it comes to cabin crew, this is literally your job. Traveling becomes your job. So if you are a travel holic, I believe this is a very good career option for you. You also get to meet a new people and uh, experience different cultures. Uh, most of the airlines offer their employees discounted free tickets. That is another perk that we have. Uh, one of the perk is also being a cabin crew. You will um, not be micromanaged. No. A career as an air hostess or a cabin crew will lead to a holistic personality development, which um, most careers don't offer. Like you are not there just to sit in front of your laptop all day long. You get to travel, you get to meet new people and you are not micromanaged. Well, uh, like every other career, there are some of the cons too, but I believe that cons are pretty much less than the pros we have. So there can be exhaustion, there can be a little turmoil in your living, uh, in your lifestyle. There can be, you know, a misbalance when it comes to managing your life and your career. So work-life balance is again uh, something that most of the people find it difficult to uh, maintain. But I think you can overcome it. That's my personal opinion, of course. Uh, the job of an air hostess crew is very, very tough and challenging sometimes because you can experience all sort of people. Now, it deals with people. And people, as you know, have a lot of different kinds of personalities. They, are, they can be welcoming. They cannot be much welcoming. They can be rude. They must not be in mood that day when they are flying or they must be uh, having a certain kind of phobia. So dealing with all such personalities is uh, something that becomes a very important part of your job role. So that can be a con for um, some people. But
but as I said, pros are much way much more than uh, the cons that we have. Now let's discuss some of the questions that are asked by people um, regarding this career prospect. First is of course the qualifications that you need. So the age bar is something that you have a minimum of 17 years of age. Aspirant must be well versed in English, of course, because English is an internationally accepted language. Also it becomes a medium of communication. So it's very important mm -hmm. to be fluent in English language. Candidates are hired as cabin crew once they complete 10 plus 2 level of education. So um, if you think that you this is what you want to pursue, then I think you should get right into a training center mm. as soon as you pass out your 10 plus 2, as soon as you graduate your high school is the right time to enter. Now, do airlines uh, hire married cabin crew? Mm. Uh, well, Regarding, regarding the marital rule, there are different guidelines. However, some guidelines have a clauses wherein unmarried candidates um, are eligible to apply, but it's not rigid, it's flexible. Again, is graduation uh, important or necessary? Now the minimum qualification um, to be hired as a cabin crew is completing your high school, which means 10 plus 2 level of education in any stream. So candidate who have completed their graduation will be given any, um, you will not be given any specific advantage. So to become an air hostess or an air um, or a cabin crew, you need not to be, um, you know, doing your graduation beforehand. It's not very rigid here. Just you have to keep in mind that um, regardless of the uh, regardless of uh, the stream that you have, high school is the necessity. Well, um, moving forward, we have another question that says, do air hostess get holidays? Well, of course, they, who ha they do have a very uh, hectic schedule. Their work-life balance is mismatched, but uh, they do have um, a very uh, good provision for holidays too. So once they become a com confirmed employee, they are allowed to have holidays. <laughs> Now, these are certain code of conduct. Uh, there are certain code of conduct that you need to follow, which um, in detail we'll discuss some other day, but the foremost one is your appearance and the appearance management is very important. Uniform uh, comes under there. And this is some of the example that we have right now, the kind of uniform that we have of um, an air hostess. With this, uh, that's all I have to discuss for today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining in and I will see you super soon.